My name is McCabe Millen. Uh, I'm an attackman. I'm a senior this year. I go to McDonald's. McCabe Millen gets free. He scores. That number one ranked recruit in the senior class. Just his third game of the season for McDonough. He's been injured and he comes back here tonight in a big way there. So it's been good to kind of like ease back into shooting as I'm, you know, doing it at 45, 50%, 60% to get the goalies going. And then uh, when I'm out here on my own, I can just like really start to get them going myself, like without having to worry about, you know, goalies complaining about spots or whatever. And then I'll be fully cleared to suit them up and play on um, April 11th against Severn. Um, both my parents, uh, they're still the um, only husband and wife duo in the National Lacrosse Hall of Fame. Um, so growing up, you know, lacrosse was always, always in the house, always being talked about. And, um, you know, my dad's run lacrosse camps his uh, whole professional life. So, you know, growing up, I always wanted to travel with him and, um, you know, be around lacrosse as much as possible. So, um, you know, never had it forced on me, but lacrosse was, you know, always something that was in my life and something I'm really grateful for. Never really felt any pressure from the you know the last name just because you know I'm I'm my own player and I've taken so much from my dad and my mom but um, you know I'm I'm me and I'm just trying to enjoy playing because I love to do it. I think my first memory that I have um, playing was like some LTRC rec ball. Um, ironically enough, my first LTRC team was Virginia. That really being the first time, you know, having a memory of lacrosse, but lacrosse has kind of always been in my life as long as I can remember. And um, there was never really any specific moment where I can think back as the first time that um, I was, you know, either playing organized lacrosse or, um, you know, learning about the sport. My, uh, my sophomore year came, it was still kind of under the cloud of COVID a little bit. Um, we did not play any out of conference games, so we had uh, 10 league games before the playoffs, and uh, that was an incredible team. We went 10-0 in the league, undefeated, um, and we were really, really special team. Um, you know, I had, was playing with my guy Jack Horrigan over on the left side, and um, had numerous skip passes through to him on the left side, which was um, a ton of fun. Um, but then, you know, we got we got beat by a really good BL team in the uh, semifinals at Navy, and. I think, you know, for my growth as a player and as a leader, I think I really learned a lot from, from that season and um, just understanding really the, the pain of losing and having to say goodbye to seniors that you spend, you know, every day with is, is definitely something that um, trying to avoid at all costs and, you know, the rest of my years. And, you know, rankings are, they're very cool because it's, it's cool to be able to have some validation knowing that um, you put so much effort in, it's, it's cool to be recognized, but it's kind of just a stepping stone. I've always, you know, thought that I've worked harder to try and accomplish greater things than that. So while it's a really cool validation and definitely a huge, huge honor and um, very grateful for it, I just, you know, I would I try and use it a little bit more as a stepping stone into, um, you know, finishing out my high school career and um, hopefully being able to have a great collegiate career as well. My recruiting process was definitely pretty crazy. Um, and, you know, thinking back, you know, it, it definitely moved really fast. A lot of texts at first, and then, you know, the hardest part about it is, you know, if you get a uh, text from a head coach and then an offensive coordinator, and, you know, if you have, if you're lucky enough to have 10 schools talking to you, that's like 20 people you got to stay in, um, you know, very respectful communication with. So I ended up taking five visits. It was definitely pretty busy, especially trying to start uh, my junior year of a very rigorous academic um, school like McDonough. So um, it, was, it was pretty stressful at times, but looking back and look back and be very appreciative that um, I was able to be in that position in the first place. My junior year was, it was really one of the first years where there was a little bit more of a spotlight uh, for me, or at least that I felt a little bit more. Um, you know, I struggled early in the year. I was, I felt as though I was trying to make plays instead of just you know reading and reacting and 
um, you know, being confident as a player. Um, you know, the team struggled as well. We, uh, we had a bunch of losses earlier in the year and uh, we had to win out to even make the playoffs and um, we really just turned it on. My brother coming back um, from injury was, you know, he really gave us a spark and, um, you know, I, I really found my groove and was playing how I knew I could play and um, we ended up winning a championship. The McDonough Eagles are the champions of the A Conference in the MIAA, their fourth title. The senior leadership on that team was unlike anything else, and um, without those seniors, I don't think we would have been able to, you know, end up winning that MIAA championship, which, you know, I've, I've wanted for a really long time. I think I noticed in my, my junior year that uh, when I was too focused on trying to win and too focused on, you know, trying to do X, Y, and Z, I wasn't playing as well, so uh, my motto that I really wanted to set up for my senior year was just to have fun every day and um, you know when I'm out there smiling and enjoying playing that um, I'm, I'm a much better player so I just really wanted to focus on uh, trying to have as much fun as I could this year and I think I've lived up to it so far so just wanted to put the reminder on the glove so if there's any time that um, I feel like I'm struggling a little bit I can just remind, remind myself just to enjoy every moment and just have some fun. It's a really uneven brick wall Phil. All right, so I feel like one um, really great part of your game is your vision while dodging, through passes, skip passes. Can you just break down a little bit of uh, how you worked on that? Yeah, so um, I think the biggest thing for me, you know, growing up and working on that is just understanding um, as you continue to get older, you know, one of the biggest looks that you're going to think is there is always going to be from the slide guy. You know, more often than not, defenses are going to be going from the crease. And um, one of the things that my dad and uh, one of my other coaches, Coach Austin Stewart, talks about is a lot of times that look is fool's gold because, you know, understanding that the two slide is going to be coming right um, from behind that guy usually. Um, so one of the things growing up that I was always taught um, to do and that, you know, I watched a ton of Grant Amen and he's the king of skip passes. So um, if I was dodging up on this right alley here and I see that um, you know that first cutter is open from the crease. If I see that the two slides kind of hedging there, I know immediately that my next look is going to be straight through. Um, and also another thing that's really important is as you're dodging, is just to understand that um, if you're going really hard, the attention you draw is going to be even more than you think. And every defenseman is thinking about whether they're going to need to go or not. Um, whether you know they need to be worried about you know trying to help down somewhere so um, a lot of times as long as you go really hard and try and draw as much attention as possible looks that you don't think are going to be there will open up just because you know a defenseman may get lazy or um, you might be able to find a lane because a stick drops a little bit but um, I think most importantly is just understanding um, where that two slides coming from for those skips and understand, understanding that you know sometimes that crease look is going to be there depending on your angles but more often than not it's probably going to be a skip pass through. So when you dodge would you say your pass first shoot first um, kind of a combination? Uh, probably a combination um, I think the uh, biggest thing that I've been working on is trying to become a little bit more of a pass first attackman to kind of open up some more shooting opportunities um, but I think growing up, I was a little bit too much shoot first. And then um, as I've matured in high school a lot more, and um, I would say specifically like my sophomore year, uh, I learned a lot more about just dodging just to pass and um, what that can do for you um, as a shooter as well. Because if a defense has to respect you as a passer, they can't, you know, they can't slide as fast, which is going to mean, gonna mean you're going to be able to shoot a little bit easier. Um, but I think now I think I've found a really good combination of both and being able to um, get to the rack whenever I want, but also know that um, I can look in the past most of the time. And then this senior year has been, you know, a little bit of a, a little bit of a bumpy road for me. Um, I ended up being injured. Uh, I got injured early, uh, just before the season in February, um, and you know it was it was tough. I I had looked forward to this year for a really long time to kind of 
be a finale to you know a really fun career here at McDonough. I had a little bit of a setback where I had to miss some more games and um, it's, it's just been a really, really unorthodox year for me. I haven't been able to practice much with the team. Rehab is not something I'm very used to. Um, I'm used to be able to just kind of go out and not have to think about specifics in a workout and just know what I'm trying to accomplish and you know if I'm going out and shooting just trying to get my shots in and uh, but yeah rehab is rehab's been tough. Um, been lucky enough at McDonough we have some unbelievable facilities and you know specifically the pool which has been um, it is it has been tough. Are you want to try no belt? So even though it's a jog good speed up out of water. And sprint. Push in the cage. Come on, chest up, head up out of water. Come on, push, 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 push. Pump the arms, pump the arms. Five seconds, come on, push down, come on. Push down, come on, push. Arms up, drive through, drive through, drive through. Come on, go, let's go. Nice, 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 First game back against Severn, I was it was really I don't know if I've been excited for a game as excited for a game as I have in you know maybe my whole high school career. I mean, it was just so great to be able to be back on the field with you know a group of guys who I'm so close with and care so much about. Do it for your brothers. Do it for the 34 guys on this team. Do it for McDonough. Do it for each other. Let's go, boys. <laughs> Um, you know, I, I was, you know, limited in my role and um, going into that game, the only thing I was trying to do is, you know, just play off ball and kind of get back into the swing of things. So um, it was really good. I think I, I've learned a lot from watching on the sidelines and, you know, I, I feel like I've gotten a lot smarter as a player as well. Just getting to put your eye black on again and put the jersey on and um, I was very thankful for that. Well, this is an MIA A conference game. The A conference is uh, regularly considered as the best league in the country, and these are two of the best teams. Uh, McDonald lost their first game last week. Capitol Hall lost their first game. They both have one loss. This is a huge contest for both schools.
our rivalry game against Gilman, as always, it's it's a huge, huge deal. And um, you know, playoff implications aside, like that game just means so much to our alumni and to McDonough itself. Um, and that was really just all about pride. And um, you know, we break every huddle with pride because we mean it in our program. And you know, pride as lacrosse players, pride as a McDonough student. Um, and that was really everything we were playing for there. And hey, listen up. Hey, do not worry about anything else except knowing this fact, that when you put on this jersey that says what it says, and you look at what the jersey is down there at that end of the field, you do nothing but go a million miles an hour, 100% all game long. And you do not let up for 48 minutes when you look and see that other jersey. That's what this rivalry means. That's how we have to play all day today. So have that in your heads all day. All right, here we go. Pride on three. One, two, three. Hey. Let's go, Dominique. Let's go. Let's go. Let's go. Let's go. All the freaking years, all the games, McDonough versus Gilman, right? What's our job today? Our job today is win. Beating them, right? Everyone talks about beating Gilman at McDonough. Everyone. This year rides on beating Gilman. And it's going to take all of us, all of us, right? Right now, in this rivalry game. All bets are off. This is the last game of the season, right? We'll play like it's ours too. That's what it is. That's what this rivalry is. Let's go, boys. Let's go. Right on three, one, two, three. I think the one thing that I can take away from you know, my years at McDonald Lacrosse is to never take a moment for granted. And I, you know, there have definitely been times, you know, you hear people talking about, oh my God, I'm so tired, I'm so sore, I don't want to go to practice, my body's hurting. But like, you know, looking back at you know, my four years, um, being, having that freshman year stolen away and having that the senior year for those 2020s taken, you know, never taking a moment for granted there. Um, my sophomore year when, you know, we're 10-0 and 0 and we're going into the playoffs, shouldn't have taken a moment for granted there where we're feeling complacent as if, you know, we're going to get this championship because we're 10-0 and 0 and not taking a moment there for granted at practice as we're trying to get ready for the playoffs or, um, you know, my junior year as we're struggling in the MIA, I'm, I'm, I was used to being 10 and 0 and every game just going our way and um, not taking a moment for granted when you are winning. Um, and then easiest for me now is, you know, looking back 
Some of my overall best memories at McDonough are during practice. You know, game days are, the, are awesome, but you know, I might even love practice more just because of how much um, I enjoy playing with you know these guys and you know how hard we compete with each other and um, just how much I, I love McDonough as a whole. So I think my my biggest takeaway from McDonough lacrosse is just to never take anything for granted um, and to treat each day, each practice, each play with the same amount of intensity and. Um, trying to do the best you can possibly do.